Hey everyone, this is Goddess Rhonda here for Pagan Business News, interviewing the very way awesome Elizabeth Ruth, aka Big Liz of Big Liz's Conjure Corner. Hello. <laughs> Hi. So tell us, Liz, I mean, you've got a lot going on. I was looking at your website and your Facebook, and you have so many things going on. I don't know how you managed to do it. We're going to start to break it down one by one, but let's first start off on telling our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you got started on this magical journey of yours. Well, I've been practicing for several years now. Um, I remember uh, growing up in my our house in Ohio where we had all kinds of spirit activity. It was, I didn't even know it was anything unusual. It was just things that happened, things we did. Um, and I remember going with my grandmother when we would come spend summers in Chicago at my mom's and she would go and visit a worker. And all I knew that was there was incense and lots of candles and beaded curtains it was the seventies. Um, so I really didn't pay much attention to it. Um, I, I went through my undergraduate and graduate school uh, career studying black studies, typically slavery um, and antebellum. And then um, after the war, 20th century, black female writers in the Harlem Renaissance. So always within literature, you come across things about root work and conjure and, and witchcraft and things like that. But, you know, it was from more of an academic standpoint. And then I have these trickster spirits that have always been with me. And I would always lose things in my own house. And I remembered that there were places in our house in Ohio that I could stick things and they would disappear and then they'd show up three years later, like wow. in the someplace else. And we've had stories of visitations of our ancestors and a particular man that would come who was very tall, very dark, wore a top hat and would come every time somebody died he would visit someone in my family. Right. So um, one day I'm in my office, I become um, uh, friends with the fellows who own the voodoo store in Chicago. And one of the owners is my uh, was my photography mentor. And I'm sitting in an office in my house because I work at home and there were two desks and one of the desks had another computer. All of a sudden one day the computer just came on and then it logged itself in. And I was like, oh, Lord Jesus, I got hates. <laughs> that was years ago. I went on Facebook. I'm like, look, I'm gonna need y'all. And I tagged my friends, Alan and Jeff. And I told them, I'm gonna need y'all to come over here and, and get these folks up out of my house because I'm really not about that life. And they came over and I started telling them about some of the things that I told you about. And then I started telling them about the man with the top hat. And they were like, um, you don't know who that is. And I was like, no, I don't. And they were like, they started telling me about the Baron. Um, and they gave me a book on the history of Haitian voodoo. And I attended my first voodoo fet and saw some things there that were not explainable, you know, like to like what we call mainstream, you know, uh, mundane people. I saw some really interesting things happen there. And that is what just set me on this path. The funny thing is my daughter did a working before I ever did. She had an enemy at school that had been um, bullying her. And so they gave her an enemy be gone Grigory and it has a nail in it and it's a rusty nail. And all of a sudden that little girl got, you know, they have to have a requirement for their um, uh, tetanus shots. But she had to touch it in order for the spell to work. And my daughter was to carry the Grigory. Well, the little girl, my daughter slipped it in her boot and the little girl stuck her foot in and was like, what's this? Picked it up, rolled it around in her hands real good looking at it. And then she threw it away. And wouldn't you know, every time my daughter stood next to that little girl for months, that, girl, that child would take off running. And so I would bring my friends to the playground and be like, look, 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 watch this, y'all, watch this. And I'd be like, go stand next to her. And she would go stand next to that little girl and that little girl would run the other direction. So all of those things combined, plus, you know, my deep passion for the history of 
um, Africans of the diaspora in this country and others really drew me into root work. I never had an intention of having a store, mm -hmm. um, eventually initiating, which I'm going to be doing soon, um, the being a quote unquote black leader in the magical community, that was never my intention. I just wanted to learn and through strange turns and twists of, of events. And um, unfortunately, a relative of mine uh, was on his way to work and was murdered. Oh, and, wow. um, you know, really good guy, really, 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 really awesome young man, honor student, the whole nine yards, um, made me realize, oh, it's time to get the hell out of Chicago. And so I came back to Ohio. And this is the home of my maternal ancestors. My other ancestors are in Alabama. So when I would go down there, I would see some interesting things as well. But the real spirit connections really came through my grandmother, uh, the original Elizabeth Ruth, because she actually would see dead people, talk to them. And she was like, when I was like six years old, we were standing in the window in the house I grew up in. And she pointed down in the courtyard and she said, I was six years old when I saw my first witch. And I'm just like, I'm sick. So I'm just standing there and I'm like, and, and she never said anything else. So, you know, by the time you get to be a teenager, I was 16 when she passed away and I, we all moved to Chicago and I was living with my mother. You know, you just kind of don't get those lessons. You don't listen to, unfortunately, what the older people have to say. So I really have no idea a lot of what she knew. Most of the things that people consider root work and conjure that happened in my family um, were some just things that I thought that we did. I had no idea that, you know, being visited by spirits or any of this was a big deal because it's just happened. <laughs> so that's, that's how I got started in this. And you know, uh, ended up leaving the voodoo store back to Ohio and um, continuing and making my business stronger. And what started off as just a part-time passion has now grown into a very, very large business where um, I offer divination services and products as well as classes to teach people about the craft. Awesome. Wow. wow. Really awesome. Really awesome. And I have to add for our, our our viewers and myself. Viewers and you tell us what a blitch is. Well, you know what? Everybody keeps attributing this term to me. I did not come up with blitch. I think it was Daisy um, October. I don't know who came up with blitch, but it wasn't me. But a blitch is just a black witch. And everybody keeps saying, I made this up. I promise you, I didn't. I'd love to take credit for it. You know, if I if I make shirts, I'll talk to Daisy about maybe splitting some proceeds. But I swear, I did not come up with the name, but I love it. And it's just a black witch, you know, depending on what side of the feminist triangle you sit on, you know, some people don't like to be referred to as bitches. You know what I'm saying? And so me and my girlfriends, we always make jokes and call ourselves that in private com company. But I found this to be a much more pleasing term that really it describes what we do. We're black witches. Right. We're blitches. Okay. That being. That perfect sense. Now tell us about your again yeah. column, Ask Big Liz. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. I've got a cough. I'm coming down from the flu. <coughs> Excuse me. It's okay. Um, now, I used to have the advice column under my government name. Uh, I've been an advisor for people forever, and I've always loved Dear Abby and things like that. So several years ago, I started an advice column. When I moved to spiritual work, I realized that now I could take those talents and then I could combine them with spell work suggestions. So I turned that Facebook page into Ask Big Liz. Although I'll be real honest with you, I'm so busy that I rarely get a chance to answer. Uh, I'm usually just answering questions left and right on Facebook and not, you know, a um, whole lot of time to devote to that column at, at right now. Right. I understand. And yeah, I see you've got a lot going on. You've got your show and all kinds, but we'll get to that in a minute. So mm -hmm. also, because I'm looking at, you know, we have, uh, we've got her 
her many titles, Elizabeth Roots, we've got Blitch, we've got Root Worker, Conjurer, Diviner, Photographer, Instructional Designer, Writer, and Miniature Addict. So we're just kind of going down the list and breaking things down a little bit. So tell us about what an instructional designer is and about your work in this field. Well, an instructional designer is simply someone that works with what we call SMEs, subject matter experts, in their field to take the information that they know, put it into a format that's teachable online. And I've been in somehow in education and instructional design for well over 25 years. I've been an instructional designer for 17 mm-hmm. um, or 18 at this point. But, um, you know, I've worked for big name companies, Tribune, MetLife, KPMG, um, traveling all over the country, not only writing the training materials, but actually presenting them to people. But now what I solely do is I work from home. I telecommute um, for a, um, a an education system in Chicago, and they own several higher ed uh, institutions. And so what I do is I help them design their online courses, and I've been there for seven years. Um, and um, then I also use those talents when I'm designing online seminars for my students uh, that take root, root working classes. So it comes in really handy that I, I have this these skills, uh, technological skills as well as writing skills that can help teach this information online so that everybody can access it because that's the whole premise behind online learning is that people can access it from wherever they are. Right. Uh, I was a professional photographer for years. That's how I came in touch with my magical mentors. Um, I, in in 2009, I lost everything. I was laid off from MetLife. They hired, they hired, they fired half of their training and development people um, because of the recession. They weren't hiring people. So why have people to train them? Um, And even though they made a profit that year, I mean, I lost my house. I, you know, I, I had to file bankruptcy. It was a, I had a hysterectomy. I had all kinds of nonsense going on in 2009, but I always loved to take pictures. And so I just started taking pictures and then people were like, okay, will you take my picture? And right, I ended right. up being a professional photographer, especially specializing in food and boudoir photography. So I would take, you know, the age hire a makeup artist they get their hair done and come in and we would shoot either in my home or theirs beautiful images of them and usually they gave those pictures to their significant others or they even kept the images for themselves but i really worked to make everybody realize that they were beautiful and the reason why i was really encouraged to do this because somebody did it for me for my 40th birthday and it was probably the first time in my life i'm like oh my god I looked at myself and I was like, oh my God, you're beautiful. And so I wanted to do that for other people. Um, strangely enough, that kind of translates into root work because a lot of people have confidence and self-esteem issues. And I work to help them with those through spiritual work as well as just practical knowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, my, my master's degree is in English. So I've taught business writing online for almost eight years. Um, I don't do that anymore because of my root working business. Um, I, um, and I, I love dollhouses. I, I built a dollhouse from scratch in a one twelfth uh, scale. And I put it down for two years while I interned at the voodoo store. But, um, now that I've moved, it was the only thing I mean, I'm, before I moved anything to Ohio, I drove my dollhouse here. It's about 52 inches tall and about 34 inches wide. And it's got four floors or three or four, and I'm still working on it. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So, and learning how to, uh, make, uh, polymer clay things like food and like things like that and just decorating and like, I'm going to turn the whole thing top floor into an office slash because it's like an attic space slash root work conjure witchcraft room and it's my hope that one day maybe when i retire i can make little room boxes so say you're a practitioner and you don't have space for like an all huge altar and things like that Mm -hmm. 
make a miniature altar for you for your Lawa or your Orisha or whatever you want to recognize in this little room box, something that would be portable and people could take with them when they travel. So, you know, that's my hope, but it's it's a it's a hobby that I haven't been able to really work on lately because of my business. Right, and you do. You have a lot going on. So I can totally understand that. You know, I was going to ask you about some of your work as a root worker and a conjurer, and you kind of already answered me. I just thought that that's really beautiful doing the boudoir pictures, especially, you know, I've had a, a actually listening to your history, it sounds like you've it's like I'm listening to my own life, the things that you've said about what happened to you. But with, you know, the hysterectomy, as women, when we have a hysterectomy, we may not feel as sexy and as womanly because something was taken from us. And so by giving women that back, getting them back in touch with their beauty and their sexuality with the boudoir pictures, I think that's probably one of the most healing things that you can do using your artistry or, you know, incorporating your conjure work and your root work and incorporating the art and helping someone to regain that sense of themselves because you know sexuality is not just a feeling of of sexual you know of sexual want sexual energy is also very powerful and when we feel robbed of that or that's taken from us it can diminish our perception of our power so i really think that that's a very beautiful um thing that you're doing i'm hoping that you would maybe advertise that to maybe um yeah you know i don't do the photography anymore um it's just all of the people issues that take place with that and that is a very consuming art form yeah. because you know um there's a people think oh point a camera whatever whatever no there's a lot of stuff that go into the preparation of that and then the processing afterwards because we all have things that we'd like to make just look a little bit different. One of the things that I care, one of the things, I'm not um, one of those people that um, I used to, that was another thing I had a problem with. People wanted me to make them not look like themselves. Right. And I'm like, I'm a wrong photographer for that. Yeah, I'm gonna lighten up the dark circles around your eyes. I might nip it in a little bit there, tuck it up a little bit here, but I'm not gonna make you look like a Barbie doll. I'm not gonna not look like yourself. and um the last big shoot i had i was really disheartened by a couple of the people i had a, like a day-long shoot and then i retired i had a weekend long shoot because these women just didn't like themselves mm -hmm. and there was nothing that i could do in the post-processing except completely change the way they looked that to make them happy one woman ordered pictures and she was the smallest woman there and she was not a black woman which was like really, you know, surprising to me. She was a woman of color and all of her pictures didn't have her face on them. Wow. You know, and then another sister who was pretty large wanted things that really edged on pornography and, you know, kept trying to show parts of her bodies and pictures that I did not feel comfortable taking pictures of. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had to give I had to give that photography part up. The, the, I take that talent now and if you go to my website, I try to take the best pictures I can of my products. Mm -hmm. So you know what's going to be in that tin of roots when you get it or or something like that. So there there there'll probably be no more um, professional photography of people. It's hard enough in this world with working with people um, in the spiritual realm. You know, people expect magic to be a quick fix. Mm -hmm. They expect it to work every single time. And I have to ask a lot of the folks, well, when you were a Christian and you prayed and you didn't get your prayers answered, did that keep you from praying again? Right. You know? <laughs> it may not have been answered the way you thought it should be answered. That That's another thing. Um, so, and that's one of the reasons why I don't do a lot of spell work for people. My mission in my business is to make you magical. Let you understand what you have in you to manifest change in your life. Because people are like, why are you teaching people how to do their own root work? They're not going to want to buy your products anymore. Well, 
you know, I got a job, number one. I'm not trying to get rich off of people. Um, but I love to do this full time. Yeah. And business is insane that my actually my apprentice does. That's this is her job. I mean, she she can't work no other job because she's too busy doing this one. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I come up with the formulas. She's now been able, because she's been working with me for over a year, to come up with new formulas. We're going to debut her line because, you know, even though I am a two-handed worker, I bless and I curse primarily the products that I sell, with the exception of Goofer Dust, um, it are for improving your life or getting negative energy out of your life. But my cousin has a completely different personality than me. And so she's going to be adding things that kind of are not so pretty. <laughs> and I'm going to let her explain those when we go on Facebook Live tonight. So those things that sometimes what you got to do, what a witch got to do. And so uh, Belladonna is going to be, you know, I mean, her whole heart and her name is poison. I mean, <laughs> Belladonna Tatura. I mean, so that just tells you there, right there. Um, so kind of the the darker side of, of of witchcraft, if you would say. But you know, I don't look at black magic, white magic. I tell everybody the only thing black about my magic is me. <laughs> you know, uh, you do what you have to do. You do what's justified. I know that people will go after people with magic, but. I've always been of the belief that if it is not justified work, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes there are people that work with really, really, really bad spirits. Right. And right. Sometimes that stuff comes through. But most of the time, people are always worried about somebody working on them and throwing something on them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the reality of the matter is, yes, it can affect you even if you don't believe in it. However, most of the time, if you don't deserve that, I very rarely have seen it work, at least in my experience. People come for me a lot. People just don't like to see people enjoying life. Mm -hmm. uh, they're miserable people. Misery loves company. That's true. You know, That's so true. I'm very, I don't post spell work online. I, I have real issues with people who do. Um, I don't threaten people online. I have real issues with people who do. If I have an issue with somebody, I believe that that type of working is something private that you have to do in order to keep yourself safe. I don't think, um, you know, witch wars and all this other nonsense that I see happening in the online community. And it's not just witchcraft or uh, the pagan community all over. People internet thugging. People just, you know, want to argue extremely negative. I don't participate in that kind of stuff. Right. But out of that, <laughs> hi, kitty. <laughs> How does the, my cats are like that. Yours looks like Marky Post, one of my cats. But out of that, you know, you'll see a lot of people worried that people are doing benevolent magic to them and uh, or ma malevolent magic to them. Right, right, right. And so I just tell people, you know, do that CPR, that cleanse, protect, and reverse. You know, I teach it in my classes. It's a way of life, you know, um, do right by your spirits. Right. You're right about the ancestors so that you'll be within their protection and um, try not to worry about people that just are, for the most part, miserable. Um, you know, I don't worry about competition. We started the Black Craft Emporium on Facebook, which is an open group. Anybody can join the Black Craft Emporium. However, in order to post your products in the Black Craft Emporium, you have to be a worker of color. Why did I do this? Because I was in an, uh, a, a group of black magical practitioners one night and this woman put up a post about she's eclectic. So here's her list of suggested stores. My mentor store was on there and they do sell legitimate products. Hell, they trained me. But that list was a black owned root worker, conjurer, witch or diviner. And this was a black group for magic. And so people were always saying, you know, black people have forgotten about this. Um, we became Christians. Our, our parents taught us that it was evil. And for the most part of, about that, that's true. But now, you know, I, I'm telling you, there's so many things that have happened, but I'm going to tell you what was key and pivotal to this. Two things. 
was Beyonce's Lemonade. People were like, what's going on here? What's she talking about? Wearing all white, sweeping on a mat. What is this Oshun people keep talking about? You know, what are these Orisha people pe keep talking about? And that whole surge of black girl magic, that hashtag, those two things started making blitches come out of the woodwork. And then Mama Omi started Daughters of the Moon, which was the Black Witch Convention. And that was absolutely insane, the response to that. You know, she booked one room in a banquet hall and they had a couple breakout rooms, not very big. And when I got to the conference that year, the line was wrapped around the corner. Wow, that's so cool. We had over 200, oh, I believe, almost 200 witches in there. We're planning on 500 this year. It's going to be in Baltimore, Maryland. It's going to be October 20th to 22nd, and I am their PR director. So once the final things get going, I'll be sending out press releases to all major Black pagan publications, um, major pagan publications, period. I'm going to be doing interviews with Wild Hunt and other uh, pagan uh, groups. I'm also going to be sending this out to magazines that pertain to Black lifestyles. Why? Because for too long, I've found, especially with some of our more major publications, a definite Christian slant. Mm -hmm. And all Black people aren't Christians. And more and more of them are leaving the church every day because of the oppression of Christianity for Black people in this country, and none of it has been made more apparent than through and after this past election. So a lot of these so-called Christian ideals and principles don't mean us any good. And they're not really Christian, but they still perpetuate them through the names of religion. So you're going to see a lot of people leaving those faiths and realizing, hey, the things that our ancestors did were not evil. We're not devil worshipers. Most of us believe in one God, but we also, you know, nobody calls Catholics devil's worshipers because they have saints and we have spirits. We have Lawa. We have, you know, and Orishas are African gods, but they're a source of a higher creator God as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, more than anything else, you're going to see that Black African traditional religions are uh, the basis from which all modern religions sprung. Um, if you look at the evolutionary tree of religion, it's very plain to see to the next step after animism. So all, everything else came after that. And so uh, things from the Yoruba, things from the Fawn, those things are millennia old, way older than the advent of Christianity. And um, black people are starting and it never died. You know, some of these religions, especially the European ones, through different witch trials and um, probably Spanish Inquisition and things like that, you know, everybody had to convert to Christianity. And so they lost a lot of that. So you have a lot of people who are uh, Caucasian reaching back, looking at old things from their practices and reigniting them. However, our practices as Africans never died. In fact, they spread. They, threat, they spread throughout the diaspora. They spread to Cuba. They spread to South America. They spread to Haiti. They spread to the American South. They were in the North and they came even more so during the um, Great Migration and things in the Harlem Renaissance. One of the key members of the Harlem Renaissance, Zora Neale Hurston, is an initiated mambo. Wow. So she was initiated wow. in Haiti, and I believe she was initiated in New Orleans as well. So, um, and, you know, I've heard some white scholars try to throw shade on Zora Neale Hurston and say that she wrote a lot of things to appease her white patrons. But from what I know about Zora Neale Hurston, I don't believe that's true. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I, I studied her from a literary standpoint, um, you know, 20 some years ago. Another author is Gloria Naylor. You read Mama Day about the Gula Geechee people in you know the Carolina, Georgia area, that's full of conjure. And you know, reading it with new eyes as a practitioner is absolutely mind-blowing. It never died with us. Even if people didn't practice it, they knew about it. 
Ain't no about burying somebody's drawers in the front yard or making somebody's spaghetti with min minstrel blood. Missy Elliott says, I'm going to put my booty in his spaghetti. Okay? And everybody slept on that. They did that one song lyric. They were like, huh? And I, but for people who practice, they understood exactly what she was talking about. So for us, uh, throwing salt over our shoulders, making people take off their shoes when they come in the house, numbers of things that we do, carrying a lucky rabbit's foot um, that we've done as Black people are definite remnants. Even the Holy Ghost in church is a remnant of African spirit possession. So it lives on with us and more people are seeing it. And, you know, right now I just feel excited to be part of this bigger movement. That's really beautiful. Wow. wow. That really is a very that beautiful really thing. Really and as before we and as on to your new show, The Black Crab, I did want to ask just for everyone's um, edification, what is it? that you offer the services that you offer at Big Liz's Conjure Corner, that people come to your website, which I'll have all of the websites down on the bottom of this video article so that you'll be able to tap into any of Liz's websites. What can people hope to find at Big Liz's Conjure Corner that's going to help them out of whatever predicaments that they may be in? We have, I don't know how many formulas, maybe 30, 40, 40 some formulas that cover everything from getting your children or the people in your life to act right. It is literally called act right to if um, you need a sugar daddy. I use the traditional Cleo May recipe, put my own, own spin on it. Flawless is a version of crown of success. So I've taken all of the old hoodoo formulas I've researched them, I've examined them, I've used a lot of their key components, the things that make them powerful, but then I've added things to them that's going, that, that correspond through the doctrine of signatures that's used in witchcraft and in root work to make them uniquely mine. So you're going to find waters, baths, oils, sachet powders, conjure colognes, um, and working roots on our website that you can use yourself. There are descriptions for all of our formulas on our website. We also sell wholesale to stores. So my, my products are on sale in Chicago and Columbus and Tennessee. We're continuing to branch out and selling the products to retailers so that they can purchase them in their stores. But the biggest service I provide is, you know, not everybody's going to have all that, you know? You may want to work a route and the route that you want in order to do this spell may be extremely hard to find or maybe you don't want to buy four ounces of lemon balm or high john or something like that but you're going to want that product in it so if you want a high john oil you know you can get yourself a nice small thing of high john oil you can use it for the spell work that you're going to do you're not going to have a bunch of herbs and roots go to waste because you bought the stuff already mixed from me the reason why I educate people and tell them how to use the roots is so that they know I know what I'm doing. So people that take my classes, they still buy my products because they are not necessarily going to have all the components that they need, but they're going to know how to work the spells. Right. Um, right. But I do work to teach. If you do want to do this, not everybody's led to do this. Not everybody's also led to do their own spell work. That's another thing that I don't do a lot of spell work for people because it has contingencies. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. And too often, you know, in this uh, Eurocentric Sue Happy society, when people don't do what they're supposed to do, in order, because there's a mundane side to spell work. You just can't say, there's a spell that's going to magically happen. This is not bewitched. There are certain things that an individual is going to have to do to make these manifestations occur. Magic opens doors, creates opportunities, but it is still up to the individual to take those opportunities. Um, but we do offer spell work services. I will do divinations and find out if I am allowed to do spells, but I don't really sell spell work services 
on my website. What I sell is consultations. So if you order a spell work consultation, it will be me sitting down with you to find out, number one, is this a problem that really can be affected by magic? Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you how many women, <laughs> and 90, so I would say 98% of my customers are black women. Uh -huh. And I'm, I have a uh -huh. black witch convention to thank for that. But you, how many times I've had somebody uh, call me and ask me to do a reading for them. And I'd be like, do you really want to waste your money asking me that question? Because you already know the answer to it. And so do I. So a lot of times people will call and I want to do a spell on my man because he ain't been back. And he done moved in with Sally. Oh, okay then let him stay with Sally. <laughs> Why on earth would you waste your money or your time trying to get someone to come back to you that has left you for someone else? Right, 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 right. So a lot of times I work with clients to find out, like one of my first clients that asked me to do a love spell came and told me that her boyfriend was verbally abusing her. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you this peaceful home powder. And you're going to go home and you're going to put that in your bed. Make sure you sprinkle a good amount in between his pillowcases and underneath his sheet. And then before you all go to bed, you're going to have a conversation. And you're going to have that y'all going to have a, a quote unquote come to Jesus. And you're going to say, look, either you talk to me like you have some respect or you got to carry your ass up on out of here. Right. Ass on up out of there. And they broke up that weekend. No magic needed. But because he left and she had these herbs and roots that would leave her at peace, it helped her deal with that situation. She was able to sleep that night. She was able to be calm and relaxed because her home was peaceful again. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that we use in root work are often used to, for mundane purposes as well. So lemons are used for cut and clear. Well, they're also used for cleaning. Mm -hmm. So you're cleaning negative energy out of your life. So mm -hmm. I can clean anything with some salt, a lemon, and some baking powder, and baking soda. And if you don't believe me, watch how clean is your house. Because them chicks in London will go and clean a house, ain't been cleaned in 20 years with just that. That's right. And it's amazing. So um Lemon oil protects, it gets the dust up and it protects dust from falling. It keeps things shinier longer. So there are a lot of things that we do. We do it food. Um, we make cinnamon and sugar and all those things that um, make happiness happen. In fact, there was a study, you know, white folks call this aromatherapy. <laughs> there was a study that said that men are more attracted to women who smell like baked goods and all spice and things like that mm -hmm. and, and so there are things that work with us physiologically as well as spiritually that are part of magic and there is a science to it so um so we offer those products that will help you do that uh, also offer readings um um by, by my spiritual brother joseph are on now uh, Belladonna is going to join us on the website as a reader as well because she's been reading for quite some time now and has become quite the accomplished diviner. Um, not everybody can do their own divinations, not even diviners. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are too close to a situation and they want an objective opinion. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not a sugarcoat person. So people also know that when they come and they get a reading from me, I'm going to be really blatantly honest with you. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, you've got a lot of people out here that'll be like, oh no, you're cursed and I'm going to need $300 and your personal concerns and all these things. And I'm going to do this spell for you. And a lot of times, um, and it's, it's unfortunate um, because, you know, I, I had a person come to me the other day I went to a Baba Lao for a second opinion and I paid him a hundred dollars to tell me my spirits and he didn't tell me anything. I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Right. A reliable person that was in the Orisha or Ifa tradition, you should have let me know and I would have put you in touch with the right person. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things, the radio show, we talk about that. We talk to people in the tradition 
who are who we consider very respectful and respectable individuals, no matter what color they are. So we had Al Cummings, who has a PhD basically in witchcraft come and talk to us about all kinds of amazing things. We've had um, Mama Omi on the show. We've had Lilith Dorsey, who is a very accomplished writer on the show and presenter and teacher. We've had, um, we're going to have um, San, um, Rujo Lewis. He's going to be on on, and I'm sure I just massacred the pronunciation of his name. I'd have to be looking at it to read it, to pronounce it properly, but he's going to be on Tuesday. And that, that brother's YouTube is off the chain. I just watched a video about lodestones, how to cleanse them, baptize them. He's got videos about how to clean, cleanse your altars, all kinds of things. And he practices you know, uh, uh, the Orisha tradition, but I know he also practices other traditions as well. I believe he's, um, I, I can't speak for him, but she, um, oh, I can't pronounce it, but um, Espiritissimo, I know that for sure. So you've got, you know, we, 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 we try to find people that specifically either have topics that are of interest to people of color or actually practitioners of color to come on, share their expertise. Um, we will talk about people that are not doing as they should in the magical community. So we had one show devoted to um, a white practitioner who's been lying to people about different things in the voodoo tradition and saying he's gotten these top secret things from Ungans and most Ungans who people think they're getting information from and they're not Haitian. They're not telling them the truth, mm -hmm. but they've got people buying their $200 books and programs and stuff like that. So, you know, um, you know, just really trying to um, help people understand, first of all, how this magic works, be able to identify by different herbs, roots, processes, so that if they are buying magical products from someone, they know they're getting real things. And then also how to how to take this into their own hands because this is our birthright. This is our legacy. This is the very things that kept us alive up until now. Mm -hmm. Reality, it was our magic. It was our medicine. We couldn't roll up on no hospital, you know? And not only did we save our lives when the folks got sick in the big house, they called for Aunt Sally to go up there and save Massa's life or Massa's wife's life or Massa's children's mm -hmm. life. I just was thinking about all the stuff we knew about plants. We should have poisoned them all when we had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess if uh, if my, my grandfather's slave master had been poisoned, I wouldn't be here because he's his son. So there it's a go. strange dichotomy of how we come to to be here at this place now um another thing that's really big up to me is ancestor veneration of the people of the movement you know people have ignored our our, our elevated ancestors like harriet uh, tubman and frederick Douglass and marcus garvey and malcolm x you know people who were very very um ida b wells madam cj walker who they said was also a worker herself you know, um, people have um, ignored what they've done. The only way they're venerating their names is like this week in Black history. You know, we're not elevating our ancestors. And the reality of the matter is, if you forget where you come from, you'll forget who you are. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know who you are, you really messed up. So, you know, that's just kind of my goal, you know. Um, I don't have any biases towards teaching anybody anything, no matter who they are. But my focus, because it is so desperately needed, is my people. Don't feel comfortable uh, other cultures' magic. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is my, the magic of my culture. So I'm going to study it because I have a vested interest in it, and I'm going to tell people about it. And whether what they choose to do with that is entirely up to them. Right. Well, I have to tell well, you, I have to tell you, want you want to uh, uh, emphasize that the name of your show is The Black Craft. It's on Mixler. And I also will have that link 
in the bottom, um, in the, the text portion of the article. We'll have mm -hmm. all of Liz's links on there. So you'll be able to look at archived shows that they've had on. You can visit Big Liz's um, Conjure Corner. I put the link up also for Daughters of the Moon. If someone yes. wants to get involved with that and look at that, so you'll be able to see all of Liz's information and links and much of what she has brought up here today. You'll be able to go in and visit that. And I have to tell you, Goddess Liz, I mean, you have really filled up your plate with a lot of stuff. And I can just tell by your energy that you're going to do it, that nothing is going to stop you from doing it. And woe to the person who tries. So yeah, I, really really, so <laughs> I respect that because I can feel your energy. I feel your determination. I feel your passion for what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And more importantly, what I truly appreciate is that part of your mission is to empower people to teach them that they are not helpless that they can handle things on their own and guiding them as to what they need to do to fix a problem instead of saying oh don't worry about it i'll take care of it for you and then they just have to have faith in you or whatever other practitioner is out there instead of teaching them how to empower themselves and bring out their own power so i really do have a very strong appreciation for what it is that you're trying to do, all the work that you have accomplished, and you're a drive because your energy is screaming, woe betide the person who gets in my way because I'm just going to roll over you. I'm just going to roll over you. Right, you can go back up and roll over you again just to emphasize right. that you're not going to do that. I will do that. I will drag you. It will be either you will walk with me or you will roll under me. You can even walk ahead of me because I want people, I know there's people out here that know a lot more than what I know. But you you know, like I said, I'm really, I don't like people that are tell things that are, say things that aren't true. Like I said, I don't like all of this cattiness and people trying to bad mouth other people. And that's why my reputation has to be, I have to be beyond reproach. Right. You know? Um, I have to get my orders to my customers. I have to make sure they get what they asked for. I have to make sure that it's a quality product that I would use myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to sell you no oils that don't have any roots in them. I'm a root worker. You know, I'm not going to sell you perfume water or, or pink bubble bath um, and tell you that it's a spiritual bath, you know. And, you know, for too long, this practice has really gotten a bad rap because you got a lot of hucksters out here right and, you know the thing is is and that's another thing a lot of folks black and white they found out about some root work and and get excited as hell all of a sudden a week after they've read a couple of books they've got a store they're they're taking clients right. and while i understand that enthusiasm and encourage anybody that feels like they should go into this as a business you you still have to put the work in right you still have to study i'm i'm still learning new things every day so in in this you know and it's okay to say i don't know but maybe i can send you the, this practitioner who does because i had a client who reached out to me about an exorcism i don't do exorcisms uh, uh i sent them to my mentors because i've been on exorcisms with them before but that's just not my thing um, and it just depends on what people do, what people are comfortable doing. I also don't tell my customers that they have to do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, they usually have options and it's like, well, if you don't do anything, nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. So you got to either, you know, a lot of times I tell my clients that they should probably combine their magic with some soul healing through therapy and things like that, you know, like I was, like I said, when I, I had my hysterectomy, it was, it was a heartbreaking experience all the way around because I'd lost my job. And so I, the, the Friday was the last day of my job. Monday was my surgery because I had Cobra and I needed to get it done. Right. And, you know, um, the, 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 the idea of not being able to create life anymore. I wanted 10 kids. I ended up with one biological child and a stepdaughter. But, you know, 
that that feeling of powerlessness. I literally had a nervous breakdown. I literally bought a one-way ticket to Ohio, gave the keys to my condo to a friend of mine, and said, I don't know when I'm coming back. Right. You know, and, right. and 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 after I came back, I took a deep dive into my creative stuff with the photography that then here led to magic, and here I am. Well, you know, I, I'm not. Well, I'm sorry, what were you about to say? Oh, I was just saying, you know, like I said, people always, you know, I was new on the scene. Nobody had ever heard of me before. White people trained me, woo, woo, woo. You know, um, never tried to pretend to be anybody that I wasn't. But at the same time, I'm never, ever going to dim my light so somebody else can shine. Good for you. Good you, for you. you know, you could shine with me. You can shine over there, here, there, everywhere. But I'm not going to not say anything if something's wrong, whether it has to deal with issues of race, social justice, feminism, uh, the welfare of kids, you know, or this country in general uh, as being an American, as being the great, great, great granddaughter of someone who built this country. Right. Right. You know, I have a say and I will use it. And and so and I've always been that way. Um, I was president of the Black Student Union when I was in college. I used to joke and say, "Oh, it's the beige student union now because I'm light skinned." I used to get death threats um, for advocating for the social justice of Black people. So I've been doing this all my life. It's just now I got a little herbs and root stone in with it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That is awesome. Just, that is awesome. Just trying to have people live in their own power. And it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. Everybody has their own power. I watched, uh, uh, well, watched me, I, I had a, um, the flu um, last week and I was trying to watch this documentary on intuition. They say you only use 2% of your brain. And once I've started tapping in to these parts of my brain that I, been trained not to use because that's not logical that's all in your head i've been out been able to find out things that i really needed to know mm -hmm. probably way before they would have happened mm -hmm. and it doesn't make that thing not happen it helps me just deal with it better right i can dig it well i have to tell you i have really enjoyed listening to your journey i just I actually think that you need to write about your job. You have quite the story to tell. And I wish we had even more time to chat with you. We'll probably bring you back. I just have to tell you, she is, if you've listened to her, she's outstanding. Obviously, you can tell that she's got so much more to say. I wish I could just sit here and chat with you for the rest of the day because it's just fascinating listening to your journey, hearing what you have overcome, how you're helping other people overcome their issues with all this stuff you're working a job you've got a, a shop going you started this great new show um the, the black craft and i just have to say kudos to you for all of this stuff that you have managed to achieve is just amazing it is amazing and everyone i will have all of her links will be in the bottom part of the article the text part in case you want to contact her order some of her supplies, listen to her shows. And I hope that um, you will do extremely, I already know, I don't even have to hope. I already know, Liz, that you are going to do a tremendous job with what you're doing and really leave your mark on this world. And I have to say kudos because you've taken on a lot and you're going to do it. No one's going to stop you. And just the fact that you are, truly focusing on empowering people and letting them know that they are not helpless. I, that in itself is such a gift to give someone. I, I think it's probably one of the most valuable gifts that you can give somebody. And so yeah. kudos to you. And we will be keeping track of all of your accomplishments. And I really do hope that you will. I know you've got a lot going on right now. I understand that. But I really do hope that at some point, you might consider writing a book about your challenges and what you've been through and how you fixed it, you know, because even that, just listening to your story is very inspiring 
for other p- people who are listening, maybe having to go and face a hysterectomy, who've lost everything and have to come rise themselves up from the ashes again, like a phoenix. So mm-hmm. you just have so much to offer. And I'm really hoping that everyone who's watching this interview will take advantage of those links if they're having some sort of predicaments and get in touch with you to see how you can empower them to change their lives for the better. Well, thank, well, thank you. you. Appreciate it so much. You are so welcome. You have been an awesome guest. And again, this is Goddess Rhonda for Pagan Business News. Yes, thank you so much for joining us and for joining the very way awesome goddess Elizabeth Ruth. And we will see you again next time. Thank you, everyone. Have a great one. Take care.